Hey everyone, it's Gary from Peacekeepers Armory. Here is the brother to Obelisk. This is Eric Gonzalez's um, monolith saber. Um, I call it the brother because both of them uh, are by Gary Morris and both of them came to me at the same time. Um, originally, both of these were Eric's, but through some deals that we made, um, I kept Obelisk for myself and made the changes that I talked about in the other video. Um, I also made some changes to Monolith, uh, uh, some small ones, a little bit less so than on Obelisk. But as you can see, the reason I call it a brother, other than they came to me at the same time, is they share a lot of similarities. Uh, they're about the same length. They have um, the same base emitter with different knurling on the thin necks and some extra knurling up here, as, um, as well as the extra shroud over here. Um, the body is itself is different, uh, different grip setting, more knurling and coloring, uh, and this one's obviously more polished as opposed to the uh, weathered steel-like version of uh, this. Uh, they both have the custom crystal chambers by Gary Morris. This one's a bit more involved, which is really nice. Um, I'll show you here in a little bit. And then as you can see, this has the two switches instead of the one on here. Again, two switches is really nice, but with the uh, tech that we have now, you can do almost everything with the single switch uh, mods and whatnot. So not too big of a deal on my end, though I do prefer to if you can uh, manage it. So off to show off more of this guy. Instead of the um, cover tech, Eric prefers the D-ring. So TC uh, Custom Saber Shop was out of the, the one that was designed to be a D-ring. But that actually worked out because this one is a little nicer. It's just the normal uh, Custom Saber Shop pommel plate. And I uh, drilled and threaded it for the, uh, I think it's uh, 6 30 seconds uh, screw. And um, they're free, they're uh, separate to buy D ring. And I just uh, threaded that guy on there. Um, and that way, instead of the D-ring right in the middle, I can have it off to the side so it uh, fits a little bit better if you're uh, carrying it on your belt. Um, let's see, to get on the inside of here. Again, this has all the same electronics, really, as uh, the obelisk. So it's got a Profi board, NeoPixel, uh, the 5mm NeoPixel straw hat LED for the crystal. Um, I upgraded this speaker, which originally, again, was a flat speaker, uh, premium speaker, but I was able to modify it to fit the uh, WoW bass speaker. Um, I changed out the crystal for a much bigger crystal, and uh, it's a little bit clearer, so it uh, lights up really well. And um, that's pretty much it for the mods that I did. So I'll show this off right here. So that's the uh, monolith. Uh, sound font, well, it's essentially the obelisk sound font, the custom one I had made. Uh, however, I had him make a custom font sound for it. Oops. So if we go to it. So that's TIE Fighter, it's a cool font too, but when I go forward to the uh, monolith sound font. Monolith. See, it says monolith instead of obelisk, which is cool, it's unique, and it fits the saber really well. Um, so as you can see, it has the same, uh, color settings as mine. Um, so it'll have the color change, the, the color save state change and the font save state. Um, so when you kill it, it'll be wherever it was that you left off. Uh, he has his own personal font loadout on here that he purchased, uh, from, as you can see, Proplicator for the TIE Fighter. And then uh, from Kyberphonic, and I think there's a K-Sith font or two on here as well. Um, so on to some of the more unique features about this belt. Uh, so similar to Kanan Jarrus' saber, this actually comes off at the emitter. Got the NeoPixel pin in there. And then the NeoPixel pins right there. I should say the plate over here and the pins in here. Um, and I already have this unscrewed, but uh, for an extra reveal, you could take that guy off. And then you have kind of a classic Star Wars uh, paneling whole structure going on back here. I added some mesh and some uh, light diffusion material in the back 
just to kind of make it look a little cleaner and nicer than it was before, before it was just, you could see straight through into the electronics. So when we turn this on, it goes to my standard cycle blaze dial. So this is really cool. I really like the way this was designed. Um, and the fact that the electronics actually break away like this, uh, like Kane and Sabre, as I mentioned. And if you want, you can actually play around with it like this. There's no structural integrity issues um, by keeping this off. It's just a cover, essentially. So you can uh, pause this. So yeah. That's pretty much the gist of this saber. Um, not too much to discuss. It's got a ton of cool fonts on here, a bunch of nice uh, settings and uh, unique aspects of it. I don't know why I like being able to take off the emitter so much. It, it just makes it feel cool. Um, one day I might try to make a saber where you can actually kind of take apart all the different pieces like the crystal chamber you could take off right here and then you can mix and match things for a fully modular hill as opposed to just the outside it would be really cool using these uh, uh, breakaway pin types especially if we get some of the ones I know Dimitri made some with like six for uh, tricree use that for some of the other stuff components that you don't need uh, to have the higher gauge wires for but yeah that's the gist of this um, Eric, I hope you enjoy it. This was a fun build. A lot of work went into uh, getting everything to fit properly, but it turned out for the best. And uh, it's certainly going to be a lovely saver to add to your collection with the upgrade. So, again, it's been Gary from Peacekeepers. Hope to see you guys on the next one.